It's a bad day for Scotland as Leal Abada leaves the country. He leaves the league. He leaves Celtic because he's no longer welcomed with the champions. Welcome back, guys, to Fog Football. And yes, folks, it's a sad state of affairs when it's 2024 and a club with the motto, Club for All, can't even keep a player that's got a different nationality to what they believe in. And we've even got people here on the big YTube saying that, well, if Leila Bada's opinions don't resonate with our own, then he has to go. And he plays a pretty prominent role here when it comes to Scottish football on YouTube. And I think that's kind of a disgusting thing to Ryan say. Ryan 118. Ryan 118, there we go. And, you know... A lot gets made about Rangers. Let's, I mean, we've said club for all. Let's talk about Rangers. Club Orange, where Rangers had that rule that they couldn't sign Catholic players back in, like, the 70s, and I think it got disbanded in the 80s, right? Which was a bullshit rule. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll call it... I'm not going to... See, imagine if Rangers still had that rule in 2024. Like, I'm not saying Celtic... Celtic, of course, don't have a rule, right, that says we do not sign Jewish players, but, of course, they've had the likes of Near Bitten over the years. They've had Leila Bada... But as we've no, seen, in fairness, you can't blame this on Celtic. It's more to do with the fans and the Green Brigade, which I guess Celtic could maybe try and do. Well, no, to, stop, to be fair, Celtic did remove the Green Brigade. Yeah, so but I, then I their arse collapsed when they started going to pish and they had to bring them back. Their morality went out the window. Yeah, they're still pish, so. Well, well they still are pish, like, but I think for a few games you could argue that was affecting Celtic Football Club. But let's hear how it affected Leila Bada, shall we? And this is what he said on Instagram. He said, Life's unpredictable. Turns remind us that we're not always in control. After two and a half incredible years, the time has come to bid farewell, he said. The past six months have been a personal challenge, yet the overwhelming support from the gaffer, coaches and board have been my rock. Their unwavering faith during these times won't be forgotten but cherished forever. End of quote there from Leila Bada. We'll get into the rest in a wee minute. And I've seen a lot of Celtic fans try and defend the, the club's treatment of Abada when he came back for injury, of course, against Rangers on the 30th of December. And you know what? Did he receive a warm welcome? Did he get clapped onto that pitch? I would have to agree he did. But the reality is, on the 7th of October, when those atrocities took place over in Israel, what happened the same day when Celtic had a match at home? They whipped out banners all in favour of Abada's Home countrymen and women getting slaughtered and fucking raped. And that and that was before Israel even de decided on retaliation. Aye. So, I mean, how's a badder supposed to feel about that? I mean, no near Bitten called this out and he got abuse and he was told he wasn't welcome back. And his wife was getting death threats and all that shit via DM. So, I mean, a, well, near Bitten says he'd have to leave. A badder's been told he's going to have to leave. And, I mean, the fans haven't really made it easy for him. No surprise. It's through no fault of his own. The guy's done nothing. Yeah. No, the guy the guy has done nothing. The guy, the, the guy has simply felt... The guy feels like he has to leave Celtic because he's an Israeli Jew. And I, how's that fair? It's, no, it's not fair. I think you could clearly see that Abada, he, he liked being at Celtic, but we knew... See, as soon as this incident well, he happened... He did say he had no intentions to leave. It wasn't his plans yep. to leave. But see, as soon as this incident happened in early October, man, we, we've made quite a few feds on it. We knew he was going to have to leave. Personally, I thought he would have left in January, but for whatever reason, it's dragged on. Oh, yeah, no, you knew he had no future at the club. I mean, how can he? No, of course. No, no. It's not even like a case of Celtic fans are showing support of the, of the Palestine regime over there, right? You can support something without being hateful. And what they did after October 7th was... Hateful. You can't spin it any other way with those banners coming out. Yeah, they, they literally come out and they celebrate it. An attack on Israel's and the deaths of, you know, hundreds of people. I think it was, what, 12,000? 1,400, was what? it not? Oh, that's what I mean. 1,400, 1,400, right. 1,400 in that ballpark. Either way, man, every every life is precious and that sort of stuff. One's too many. Well, yeah, exactly. One's too many. Um, and you, you're seeing it continue. Even on the streets of Glasgow, anti-Semitism being sprayed on walls and saying that what Israel's doing is the real Holocaust and then in brackets, real, obviously trying to play into like the Holocaust deniers of back in World War II and all that. But I think this is just Celtic down to a T because you've got to look, right, even go back to the Troubles, right, which obviously will resonate pretty hard between Rangers and Celtic fans. But do you know the IRA killed more Irish Catholics than any form of... Unionist paramilitaries or British Army. Aye. No, so there you go. So when you look at it like that, I think Celtic fans have got to really wake up and realise who they've been supporting all these years. And when it comes to all these groups and terrorist 
organisations. But anyway, guys, Leila Bada, let's talk, let's move away from the political side of it. 10 million, it's not really 10 million, it's no, 3 million. No, 10 million is the amount of money that Charlotte had to pay, essentially, overall. So they're factoring in the transfer fee and they're also factoring in the contract fee for a Bada because they're, they're paying him, what, over four years, I believe it is. So in reality, the, the fee that they are paying for a Bada, the fee that Celtic's receiving is more around £3 million. Pounds. Yeah, 10 million is just his contract. Which, at one, that's poor because, I mean, it wasn't that long ago, last season, Abada was being talked about a 12, 15 million pound move to the Premier League. Multiple clubs wanting him. So they, they've lost out on Abada. No, they've lost a lot of money. I think last season this guy was worth about 20. Young, goals and assists galore. I think they've just simply slapped this 10 million price tag on him to make it seem like that he's not getting forced out. Because I think if it breaks in the news that Lila Abada, a guy wants value that probably like what five times six times the amount he's going for leaves for three million it doesn't look good for celtic but i tell you what it's like dembele dollars all over again because why are they why are they whipping the seven million extra for the three million i think three million is an awful deal for a batter some people's tried to justify this though that he hasn't played this season so yeah but it's not like he hasn't played this season because he's been yeah pitched. but the situation will also play into that like it's, it's because of what's happening i think it's just best for all parties to get this deal over and done with no, of course I mean, it is. I mean, Abada but... probably doesn't want... That's probably not his preferred destination. I think nope. he really wants to go to Charlotte. With Scott Arfield? I mean, he, he, that's like a retirement destination. Right. I mean, the guy's only 22. He'd, he'd probably much rather go down south. He'd probably rather go to the Championship or Premiership or whatnot or a move in Europe abroad to a top league. He probably doesn't want to go to Major, major League Soccer. Well, but Celtic rejected a loan bid again, for Southampton, didn't they? they, they so. have got... Their transfer window is open. It's kind of similar to... Uh, Bernabe, who was able to get a move to the Brazilian league because their transfer window is open. If Abada wants out now, then realistically he can't join any other club, so he's going to have to join a, a non-European club that's transfer window is still open, and therefore that leaves Charlotte. It's one of the few options that he's got left. So, but again, I, I don't see what's happened in between the January transfer window and now. I think he, there was options on the table to leave, like Southampton, other Championship clubs. But again, the Southampton one was alone. I don't think this situation in the Middle East is going to die down by the time the summer transfer window comes around. But I think overall, it's it's the correct decision for Abada to leave Celtic. But you can't help but feel he's been forced out of a, a massive club, right? Wait, it's wins trophies, European ambitions. Well, I'll say European ambitions. They're in Europe, all right? I'll give them that at least. And he's had to go to a team like Charlotte, who... I just it, it, going to the MLS is absolute mince, man. You can't spin it either way. It's all right for Scott Arfield or other players like Gerard at the end of their career, but for a guy with nowhere near his prime years yet leaving, it's a sad state of affairs, folks. But anyway, till next time, peace.